I got something cool to show y'all. I said I brought this in so I could show you guys. Look, this is a full up 3D printed speaker, except for the drivers. So the drivers aren't 3D printed. So the obviously. box, the, so the enclosure but, and everything. Yeah, the enclosure. It's it's an active design. He's got a separate DSP amplifier like off the side, so he's got the wires just kind of hanging out the back. But I, I've I actually stumbled across it on that is it instructables.com website. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I saw where somebody had linked one of my speaker reviews for this little BMR driver. Oh, I love and BMRs. Let me see which one is it. The two and two. Yeah, oh, it's a little. A it's a little one. baby one, right? And yeah, then it's yeah, another. I've used that one before in a design. Yeah. So I like the three and a half better than that one. I just reached out to him. I was like, "Would you be interested in sending that speaker my way?" He's like, "Heck yeah!" So. He said, I just measured it. And it actually, if you guys want to see it, I can show you the yeah. results. Yeah. That thing doesn't get very loud though, right? That, no, no, that, no. That's the problem with that little uh, BMR. But, you know, it's not, I don't know. It's kind of cool. He he was kind of surprised at what the data showed. He's like, oh, I thought I, I didn't see that in my results. But mm -hmm. uh, that's typical from DIY because they don't really have the resolution they need to get, mm -hmm. you know, the really accurate data. Um, let's see here. Is that good? Yeah, pull that back up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. So I mean, it's not perfect. Again, it's going to be a very resonant box, so that explains all these peaks and dips. Mm -hmm. um, it's got a trough right through that mid range too. Yeah. So that's what he was talking about. He said, "I didn't, I didn't realize that was there." But still, I'm like, dude, that's that's pretty cool. You is know? that real narrow area? Is that from the BMR? It's, is that what I is? I think it? he said that's. He thinks it's a port, and more than likely it is because it's got a front port. Um, okay. And most speakers, when you have a front port, if there's an enclosure resonance or a port resonance itself, mm -hmm. usually it manifests as a dip in the response. Okay. Do you so, guys know what a v uh, BMR is for the folks out there who are listening? Do you, uh, it's a balanced mode radiator. I know it doesn't it doesn't um, resonate like a typical driver does. It basically like squishes all the resonances down and it pushes them out. You know, it's pretty cool actually. Do yeah. you, have you seen the, um, <laughs> the little animation of it? Basically, it's so. like a, a cone, but like the cone actually uh, vibrates. So you can imagine, I think they have a three and a half version of that. Who's the company who makes those? Uh, Tectonic. Tectonic, yes. Yeah. They have a three and a half version that I I did a build of just that one driver and it hits pretty low. So it has some pretty good excursion. I put it in a huge box, so it's kind of hilarious. Yeah. Tectonic. Um, but Tectonic. it has like some weird. Yeah, I heard like, they got plates all weird, around the world. They do. <laughs> Tons of them. That's some weird them. dip or some kind of like weird step thing that happens. Yeah. And remember, Chana, we saw them at CES. We saw those guys. Yeah, mm -hmm. they make like panels. They make like they make these drivers, but then they make panels too. Mm -hmm. Like big, thin little panels, like wall mount panels yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. And I asked so. them about that like weird response. Yeah. And they said, yeah, they understood. Like, yeah, that's a thing we're working on. Right. That's so cool. It, it's a cool, this cool um, idea. Just from a directivity standpoint, right? Don't they do something different because it's? I guess it's almost like a point source. Yeah, well, it doesn't beam like a standard cone driver does. I do remember that. Like I said, I, that actual that little two inch driver. I mm -hmm. before they even released it, I'd seen it on their website, and I sent them an email. This is like 2015 or so, I think, and they sent me some samples. And they, I mean, Parts Express didn't even have them yet. They weren't even released in production yet. So uh, I tested it. I was really surprised by it. Very, very low sensitivity, though. Oh, yeah. I mean, oh, super yeah. low. But, you know, it, it depends on what you need. It, and they were like 12 bucks or 17 bucks when they came out. Mm -hmm. But they play clean like 200 to 20K. As long, again, as long as you don't try to make them do stupid stuff. I thought it was cool. They just, they can't um, produce very high frequencies well. Like the, the highest frequencies it doesn't do. Yeah, I mean, I don't think you should really use it as a tweeter replacement, but it's a fun project to play along with, and it does okay. It does better with high frequencies than most full-range drivers do. I will give it that. I'm trying to find... Yeah, anyway. Anyway, you guys can look it up. Tectonic, T-E-C-T-O-N-I-C. Play M-R. All right, everybody, we do the Daily Hi-Fi Podcast every Monday, 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So make sure you join up to the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash daily hi-fi, and we will see you there for the big show every Monday. Yeah.